let's look at the uh, network elements or those functional entities which realize the operation of uh, session initiation uh, uh, protocol. So we'd look at the network elements as such. Um, then we'd look at the clients and server context, specifically the SIP servers which offer certain services. And we'd look at some scenarios. So uh, there are two types of network elements. Uh, these network elements are uh, the user elements or the server elements. The servers are uh, many. We'll discuss them one by one. Uh, for now, let's look at what uh, are user agents. So user agent is actually a uh, software. It's, uh, it's an API uh, uh, that actually uh, works on behalf of the user. If it is actually uh, uh, working as a client on behalf of user, it is known as user agent client. Client means it is going to initiate the requests uh, and uh, those requests would be subsequently sent to the appropriate server and then um, uh, forwarded on to the called party. Then we have the user agent server. User agent server is again a, a user agent, but here it is working more like uh, in a server mode. So it receives those, requ those requests which have been sent by the client. Uh, it processes them and returns these uh, um, uh, responses to the SIP requests. Let's look at the servers uh, now. Uh, to begin with, uh, uh, there is a server which is a uh, redirect server. Uh, if, you re if you recall, um, redirection is a requirement that comes from the fact that we are dealing with NGNs where mobility is a very um, expected thing. Uh, so a uh, redirect server is actually uh, a service that generates uh, uh, 300 series responses. 3xx means 300 series responses uh, uh, to redirect the request for a particular client. Uh, so it means that the user is in client is, is, is informed that the request that you made or the location that you had made a request for is no more available. So you need to change the route. So indicates to try a different route to a SIP uh, recipient. Uh, so it actually not only informs, but it also provides helpful information by pushing the routing information um, to a particular uh, uh, client. So this is something which is quite interesting because this keeps uh, a SIP uh, very agile very flexible and uh, scalable because uh, users are not limited to assume only particular and permanent IDs, but they can have changing, evolving IDs, changing IP addresses, because essentially uh, when the redirect server is there as an entity, it is going to propagate the information of URIs uh, from the core of the network to the uh, edges. It means that the users, uh, once moving, they would update the location information on one side of the network uh, and this information is sent to the core and then core eventually forwards this information to the uh, access site once more. So this is the beauty that SIP capitalizes on and NGN adopts SIP for these um, um, amazing features. Then the next important server is the proxy server. A proxy server is again um, uh, most commonly found. You can think about proxy server like the one that we use for uh, uh, for proxying our uh, uh, um, network. Once we have limited IP addresses, once we have um, uh, private IP addresses on the inside of a network and we have limited public IP addresses, so we use a proxy service to uh, use those private IP addresses along with a public IP address. Uh, so it, it is not very much different from there. Uh, so uh, what it does is, it provides proxying services uh, to the uh, client. So it works both as a user agent client and a user agent server. It works as a user agent server once it provides the client uh, with the IP address that it uh, has for a particular destination. So it means in this case, it is going to act like a user agent server. Uh, but if it does not have the IP address that a particular user is uh, is looking for so it means it will work on the behalf of a user uh, and it will contact another proxy server probably in a higher organizational domain you can think about a proxy server placed in in, in, a, in, a, in a department 
then there's another proxy server in in a in a university then there's another proxy server probably at the internet service provider so this series of proxy servers is actually meant to manage the scope uh, so once a, a particular proxy server does not have an ip address so it sends the request to uh, a proxy server that further forwards you to another proxy server uh, or to the recipient itself so essentially uh, this process grows outwardly in a way that uh, whomsoever has the ip address is able to provide the ip address for a particular domain or a for, for a particular email address to the client so that the connection can be established so proxy server is quite interesting that it works like uh, on behalf of the client so while doing so proxy server can also be used to implement a certain policy by the uh, administration for instance uh, if there is a user if it is auth if it is authenticated then what services it is authorized for so and an, a user is authorized through the proxy server then the next server that we have is the registrar server uh, uh, if you if you recall uh, we typically have registrars in universities registrar is actually the department or the entity that manages the um, registration related information of the participants so it means here we have the user equipment so the registrar server actually registers the locations of users each user is identified through its user equipment id its own email address or a domain name a uri uh, so it its ip address actually needs to be registered with the registrar server so um, uh, the ip addresses are associated with one or more uris uh, which are stored in a database so the user sends a specific register request because if 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 a user wants to uh, register itself uh, in its own ip address uh, with the sip infrastructure it has to contact the registrar server through the register message uh, so that uh, the information can be stored and retrieved later uh, then we have the location server the location server offers the location service um, uh, now this is a little different from a registrar server because a registrar registers it but once it registers a certain user with its own location then it actually has to uh, require some kind of communication mechanism this is exactly where this location service comes into play so it is also like a database that stores information about users location uh, so this user location actually is coming from the registrar server again so it means that uh, uh, this location server stores the binding information between users location and its own id and this information is provided to the location server by the registrar server of course because the registrar server is placed usually is co-located with the proxy server and the location server is normally hosted in the same premises or on the same server now let's look at some interesting scenarios uh, these scenarios are based on uh, typical interaction between different uh, network elements and functional entities in the sip protocol operation so uh, this particular scenario is once we have the a user agent as the source on the left hand side then we have the destination user agent the primary goal is to connect these two now the situation or the scenario is that we have uh, two users which belong to two different domains so you see here that we have on the left hand side we have a source user agent with its own dns server now the call would be initiated through its own infrastructure in this case uh, we see that uh, the interaction between uh, user agent and proxy server is, is taking place through sip then these two servers are again communicating through sip then sip is again at play here on the destination user agent as well on the destination uh, we see that we also have location server and a registrar server which is simply shown to uh, elaborate the operation of uh, location service and the registrar as well but essentially we see that uh, this mechanism provides uh, interaction between uh, two sip clients which are in two different administrative domain this scenario is based on the fact that both uh, users are located in the same administrative domain and there is only one proxy server so it means that uh, the source user agent or the calling party is now going to talk 
to the same proxy server and the proxy server will take request on behalf of the user agent client and it will forward the request to the user agent server that is the destination user agent so you see that this interaction results into more like a triangle this triangle is uh, is implemented because we have uh, the same proxy server working between the two user agents this is quite interesting and straightforward mechanism it is uh, known as peer to peer telephony since we just have uh, two clients it is more like uh, a unicast uh, mechanism in which we have a uh, bidirectional link established between two uh, user agents so it it is also known as a peer to peer telephony we don't need the complete network paraphernalia to implement uh, telephony between two um, user agents then finally we have a, an example scenario for voice over ip between a user agent uh, on the calling side and the user agent on the call side so starting from the left hand side we have the call setup phase we have the routing phase uh, which is path establishment then we have the end data delivery then we have the call termination phase in the call setup we have uh, invite message uh, followed by the appropriate replies then we have the 200 ok confirmation then we have the final acknowledgement after this data delivery or the call establishment is taking place for multimedia content delivery then finally we have a graceful closure of service using the by message 